Hey everybody, Jace Allen here. Welcome back to the Guitar Dungeon. And today I'm messing around with a Roland D20 synthesizer. So stick around. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm messing around with the Roland D20 uh, synth that I just got in today. And uh, we're going to turn it on and uh, see how it sounds. Well, it's a good sign. We've got uh, power came on and everything seems to be working with it. So we'll try the keys and see if they all work. Oh, there's a dead one. Another dead one. So, sort of dead, half dead, mostly dead. Another one. Okay, so apparently we got some dead keys on this, which is typical uh, for this type of keyboard uh, and for the era. Uh, that it came from is which is the uh, mid 80s on this particular uh, keyboard uh, so we're going to take it apart and clean it up and see if we can't get these uh, dead keys to come back to life so let's get started okay so the first thing we're going to do is mark the dead keys with some electrical tape so that we know which ones are the ones that we need to focus on So now we'll shut it off and we'll unplug it and we'll take it back over to our bench and take it apart and start working on it. Okay, so here we are on the bench. Uh, we got the keyboard all laid out. And uh, this is a keyboard that I got uh, uh, used, obviously. Uh, it's uh, from the 80s and uh, it needs a little bit of attention. Um, a lot of times I'll buy things and the sellers don't know whether the items work or not. A lot of times they don't even know how to power them up. And so uh, what I'll do is I'll buy them and uh, kind of take a chance. Uh, usually you get a pretty good price uh, for a piece of equipment if uh, its operation is questionable. <laughs> so uh, with this one, uh, what we are gonna do is flip it over, uh, take it apart, take the key board out uh, there's like these little membrane plastic or rubber membranes in there where the keys make contact and those have a tendency to get uh, dirty and filled up with uh, gunk and so we're gonna go through and uh, give it the once over and clean it up uh, get my other camera out here and take a little closer picture you can see it's it's got a little bit of grunge on it but for the most part it's in really good condition and uh, this is one of the early synths, and uh, it's, it's an awesome synth. Check this out, it's got a three and a half inch floppy drive. <laughs> uh, so I'm anxious to play around with it and uh, get this thing cleaned up. So let's get started. Of course, I always have my little uh, like uh, microwave food trays that I use to keep screws in. It's a good idea, good practice to uh, get into because you don't want to separate or lose anything, especially if you got other things on your bench. So there are a bunch of screws in the bottom. It's pretty, pretty self-explanatory as far as removing those. So just take out all the screws off the bottom. Thank you. 
nice thing about these older machines is they're made out of metal. So it looks like it's probably aluminum. Okay, and there's some screws along the back here that I think also need to come out. Just the ones along the bottom edge because I think this metal uh, folds over, uh, tucks under this plastic part. And hopefully we'll remember which, yeah, it's pretty obvious which screws go where. of dust bunnies in this part of the piece. Okay, so inside, oh yeah, we've got dust and dust bunnies and a little bit of corrosion here and there. You can see the fuzz and the dust and these things were really, really well made. There's some dust bunnies. There's a giant dust bunny right there. So I'm sure it just needs to be cleaned up. So. We'll have to uh, maybe clean it out with uh, It's got some corrosion on it. I need to get some compressed air. I think that would help in situations like this. But nothing else seems to be in harm's way. So what we really need to do is get this panel off and get this uh, this part lifted up out so we can access the keys on the bottom. So we're going to remove these ribbons, ribbon connectors, and this one too, and then we'll find our screws. different screwdriver because that one's too big. Okay. And we can bring this over so you can see better. And this is your main uh, main board where all your probably your memory and everything and your processor is in here so you kind of want to be a little careful with your main board so you don't uh, damage anything or short circuit anything there is a battery on this uh, it's like a PC battery so there's some power in here Maybe that's to help it retain its memory. So you definitely don't want to short circuit anything or damage anything. And the 
the screws like to hide. There's another one right there. Some uh, something else going on. I feel a lot of resistance. Oh, another screw right there. They're hard to see in all the. And it's still hanging on pretty good. So I'm guessing that these screws here maybe need to come out. see them right there these are holding I think these MIDI ports are on the main board so we'll give it a try I'll take those off okay made a difference but it's still hanging on so we need these last two on either side here yep there's it's, it's falling out now so be careful so you don't drop it. okay okay so we can lift that out now and that is filthy. Look at all the dust in there. So I definitely got to get some compressed air, I think. So what we can do is just kind of let that sit there. It should be okay. And now we got to get this, this piece out. If you can see, there's a screw here and one over here. Oh, there's a little piece of like ribbon, a little tiny piece of ribbon that's loose in here. I don't know what that's for, so we'll just set it aside. Maybe it's a piece of insulation or something that came off. Okay, so it's still got a couple screws that are hidden back behind. And then there's a, well, that should come off. There's a wire holder holding these wires on, but that should come off. All right, yep, it does. So we can tuck those up. I think that one's going to fall over. And then there's one more screw down here. Okay. Board comes right off. So now we'll swap these. Actually, I think I've discovered what that is. There's another piece of that ribbon. Yep, it is. It is. Uh, I think it's Easter grass or decorative grass, like you put in a uh, basket there's a whole bunch of it in here <laughs> so so we'll, we want to protect this so let's see I could probably just lay it back down and maybe even stick a couple screws back in it just to hold it in place
there. I don't know if you can see. But then that. There, that'll keep that from falling out. And we'll just tuck this out of the way. Okay. Now I'll bring the keyboard up here. And uh, it's pretty dirty. Uh, I think while I have it all apart, I take a little bit of alcohol. I like to wear gloves. Uh, take this alcohol, get this rag saturated, just kind of clean up in here. some cotton swabs like I said I like to wear gloves if I'm using chemicals or uh, alcohol because it dries your hands out pretty bad yeah. Got just a rag here it's a old towel you can see it's been used for clean other things just gonna saturate that It doesn't have to be spotless, just so that they're not as grungy. Now, if we were doing a full on restoration, I'd probably just take all the keys off. And uh, clean them, soak them in soapy water. You know, the main thing I'm trying to do right now is just get this keyboard working again. And then once we know it's working, then we can uh, we can take it apart again and clean it. Clean it out. But yeah, this is. Uh, Pretty filthy. Someone obviously used it quite a bit. Grease from your fingers gets on things. Sticky. But that's probably pretty good for now. Okay. Okay, so now let me pull up my other phone here so you can see. Okay, so you have these springs at the end of the keys, and that's basically what's holding the keys in place. The air conditioner just kicked out, so it be a little noisy, but that's okay. So now we'll need to get these springs off. We'll need uh, probably just a screwdriver or a pair of Pliers. I like to use things like this, tweezers, forceps, They're really helpful. And then I'll have to take off the ones adjacent to, and apparently these springs are different. Depending on the black string or the black key or the white key, uh, from what I've seen on the internet, but they really don't look different to me. They look to be the same size, exact same size. So, could be different depending on the model, keyboard, you know. So. Okay, and then on the back is actually. Where the keys are being held in place. Yeah, so right there, there's this plastic strip. And uh, can't really see it, it's clear, it's a clear plastic strip. And uh, I don't know if I can get that off without breaking it. 
Oh, I can't. This just appears to be stuck on there with almost like a double face tape. So there it is, it's just a plastic, clear plastic strip holding these keys on it. There you go. And then they just pop right out. So, wow, there is some filth under here. Okay, so what we got is a very dirty. Okay, so there is, let me pull up my other phone here so you can see. So on some of these, you see this is like a membrane. So on some models, this is a rubber, rubber texture. This is like a like a membrane, like a fabric. So then under there, those are the action where the keys make contact. You can see how dirty it is under here. So we basically gotta expose this entire rubber strip. So we gotta take more keys off. And that one's that was damaged. It's, it's broken. The tab is broken off of it. And uh, that must have happened a while ago. Might be part of the re reason I'm here in uh something rattle around inside the case of the keyboard. And obviously you want to remember what keys are what. Put it back together. It's always a good idea to take photographs of things that you're taking apart too so you know how to put it back together. Okay, still got to go farther. So, I think, oh, there's another piece tab broken, which came off at this one. So I'll probably put some super glue on there and glue that back on. So, let's see, we need, da, 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 da. we need to get in here, so we need to take that piece of plastic off. Also, there we go. They're actually labeled on top too. This one says A, and that is the A. Okay, so then, there we go. We finally got to, I think, the spot where these little rubber things are going to peel up. There we go. Okay, so let me show you this in close-up. See there? They just peel up. And that whole section comes out and there's little contacts in there and see how worn they are and then inside here too those are those contacts are all worn pretty bad so we'll clean that up and you can use, also use a uh, pencil which has got graphite in it to uh, sort of Clean those and make contact. Add more material there so they actually make good contact.
this really dirty. That should take care of that. And then these might just need to be cleaned. Maybe add some graphite to these two. That does is just bridge bridge the gap between these pickups these little uh, so maybe we'll take a deoxit that's why I use that a lot that might help doing is there's these little contacts you can see them you can see the line in them it's where it's kind of worn and those little contacts make contact with the these uh, these things right here see those so it just pushes down on there bridges the gap between them It really works good. I'd rather use actual cleaning swabs than uh, cotton swabs, but I don't have any right now. I've ordered some and they've been delayed, but the cotton swabs leave cotton obviously cotton residue behind fuzz the other ones do not they're I don't know what they're made out of exactly but they uh, do not leave the residue behind so there we go that looks really clean now Take a little bit more deoxid and put it on this rag and then wipe off these contacts here on this. And it's just oxidization, it's dirt, it's grime. Can't see it.
Okay. So hopefully that will clean it up. All right, so now we'll put this rubber strip back in the same way it came out. And I'm using a toothpick to press these little knobs, nubs back down. Okay, so that one's pretty good. Got a big dust bunny there. So, man, these are dirty. So now we will put this back together. Okay, so now I need to figure out which keys went where. This is D. G.
Okay. So now uh, we got to come down here to this end. This end here. And uh, so this one's clean. So we'll take that tape off. this one and this one so we'll take probably there and then we need to turn it over again take that clear plastic off and I'm not even sure that needs to go back on um, I watched somebody else do this online and they took it off and left it off, so we'll see. Perhaps we will do the same. Okay. So let's take a look at this one. This is the one that wasn't working very good at all. And we need to go farther underneath because the way this is designed. farther yet. And farther yet. Jeez. Almost back where we started. Okay. Good. Alright. So we might as well keep going all the way this way. Procedure. Wow. Well, you know, this keyboard is from the mid 80s. And I'm sure it's probably never been opened up before. So. like little pieces of glitter <laughs> in it. I think that has something to do with the Easter grass that we found earlier. Yep, that seems to that seems to look pretty good. That deoxit really does the trick. And then on the inside of this too, we'll, we'll just spray it in there. And then let it sit. And then we will take the rest of the keys off. Strip. And spray that with the oxit. Let it 
that's it. Looks like we need a new rag. This one's pretty filthy. Piece of towel basically, and I'll spray some deoxid on it, and then we will run that over these contacts to clean them up. Is dirty in here. I mean, look at, look at that. It's just filthy in here. Okay, we'll wipe off these little rubber doodads. And hopefully that cleans those off enough. But I'm sure those are parts that you can probably buy somewhere and uh, replace if need be. Just filthy. We're talking, you know. Oh, what? 40 years of grime and grunge? And there's my toothpick. And we put these back in. Here's the toothpick. Press those little nubs back down. And hopefully this will work. Because unfortunately we got to put it all back together before we'll know if it works or not.
Okay, finally got those down. Pretty tricky, but I got them down. So now I'll put the keys back on.
aquí.
All right. Now, take those pieces of tape off so we know we oops, took care of those. Okay, last but not least, this side here. Flip it over, take that plastic off again. That's right, uh, well, we should be able to get away with just taking off this much. take the other piece of plastic off too. We'll basically have to go all the way to the end. Yep. Spray the inside of the strip. This is the oxid. Set that aside. And we'll get our rag out here. Spray a little more deoxid on that. And then clean this. Whoa, that one's really bad. That was where that was the one that wasn't working. Let me get a close-up of this so you can see how badly see how badly that contact those contacts are scratched up like so so yeah see how badly those are scratched up there yeah. those contacts right there It's a lot cleaner now. And I think we'll put a little bit of graphite since those are deep scratches. Clean off our plastic strip. Absolutely filthy. Oops. 
Okay. I'll put that down. Oh, pieces of debris, dust, there's dust all over this thing. Of course you get dust. Gloves are falling apart. I guess I don't need them on anymore because I'm not using alcohol. These little springs will bite you. So you want to be cautious with those. Take that tape off. Okay, and as you can see, it's all back together. So we will put the keyboard back in, get the chassis, Great. So we will keep these plastic strips just in case we need them eventually. I don't think we will. Somebody on YouTube said that they took them off and left them off and never had any issues. Okay. And here's 
our main board again. definitely invest in either a small compressor or some canned air. Okay, so now we'll have to remove the screws that we had put back in place here just to hold this board in. screws out that we've carefully whoops that's what I didn't want to do and uh, put those back in Also helps take photographs uh, while you're taking things apart so you kind of know where things go back together. Certainly a helpful idea. Thank you. 
make sure you get all your ground cables back in where they belong. And then attach all your ribbons. Okay.
Okay. We're all done with uh, taking it apart, cleaning it, putting it back together. So, moment of truth. Let's turn it back on and see what happens. It's a good sign. Uh-oh. Still got that one that's not... That one's not either. Oh, that one isn't. Okay, well, we'll have to uh, do a little bit more digging in to find out why those aren't uh, working. So that's the brakes. <laughs> that's how it goes sometimes. So. So we'll see uh, what we can do, and uh, I guess this will have to be continued. So we'll see you next time. Okay, here I am. I'm back, and I got it figured out. I uh, did some uh, research, and I did some digging into the keyboard and found some uh, of, they're called traces. It's the... Uh, printed circuit board it's the where the copper paths you know they're like it's like wiring but it's just it's copper underneath the green sort of epoxy shielding and that represents all the sort of circuits you know the, the traces they call it i mean it's where the it's you know connecting you know a diode to something else and so there was a couple spots where and what I did was I took a multimeter and I connected it to a couple spots and I could tell that one spot wasn't receiving, you know, any electricity, I guess. And so I was able to fix that key. That was pretty easy. That was pretty self-explanatory because uh, where the contacts are for the key, the diode underneath it, or the, yeah, the diode underneath it wasn't getting any power. So I made a little jumper to that. Uh, and fixed that. That was fine. And then the other two keys, there was three, there were, because initially there were four keys that were dead. And after I did the cleaning uh, that you saw in the video, there were three. <laughs> so I fixed one key with cleaning. So I did a ton of uh, Google searches on, okay, how do you clean these things if you've or, or how do you fix them if you've already cleaned them and they still don't work? So that kind of led me to doing some electrical testing. And I'm not an electrician by any stretch of the imagination, but I, you know, I have some rudimentary knowledge. So the one key, like I said, there's, you know, the, they have the carbon contacts and then the, those rubber membranes have the little round piece of carbon on it and it, you know, and it, bridges the gap between those two contacts and it closes you know close that gap and so that creates your your sound your your key press and so that particular uh, contact ran to a diode and then that ran through a trace that went all into the you know into the electronics of the keyboard well this you know there was no continuity or signal between the end of the diode and the contact so I knew it wasn't getting power then the other ones were more complicated because I tested the contact and you know past the diode with a multimeter it didn't work I, or it did work it worked fine so that it was like okay how is this and I wish I would have videoed all this but I was I wasn't sure I wasn't sure what the outcome was going to be. I wasn't sure if uh you know, I wouldn't I did obviously don't know what I'm doing exactly when it comes to electronics. Uh but I really wish I would have filmed it so that you could see uh the process that I use to troubleshoot so that you know, lay persons like us can fix our own equipment. Because trying to find people to fix these things especially if you're in a small town i'm in a rural town basically you know population nobody 
and uh, it's hard to find people unless you package it up and send it to somewhere else. You're going to pay a lot of money to have somebody repair your your gear. Uh, you know, I paid less than $200 for this thing, and so, you know, do I really want to spend maybe upwards of $600 to have somebody fix it for me? So I like to I like to have some knowledge. I like to know how to repair things, especially the vintage gear that I get. I'm not exactly operating on a huge budget either, so I like to try to save where I can and fix things, you know, with the least amount of expense involved. So that said, the other two keys, everything seemed fine with it. Well, then I followed a trace down farther, and you'll see on the, I'll show the video clip, of the fix. I didn't I didn't shoot it before I fixed it. I should have. You'll see the you'll see bright copper trace and then there's a spot where it's like dark, like you know, like a different completely different color. Well, what it is is there's and you'll see in the video. Again, I apologize. This, I know this is kind of cumbersome and everything because I don't I, I can't show you visually. But uh, you'll see underneath your in your printed circuit boards you know, because those traces are, are copper underneath that green uh, sort of protective film or epoxy or whatever it is. And so they have a bright green color to them. And so when there's corrosion on a section of the trace or that trace is you know, burned out or whatever, it turns dark because it's not, it's not bright copper anymore under there. And so that kind of gives you a hint as to where things are... Bad. And it took a little finagling to figure out where things go, but I looked at that one trace and you could tell that something was going on with it. So I took an X-Acto knife, scraped away the plastic or the green epoxy until I got down to where there should have been copper and there was nothing. It was like, I don't know if it was corroded or burned or whatever, but it was just like dark, you know, I don't know, corrosion. I mean, it almost looked looked like rust, like, you know, it was really dark. And so then I scraped away the, uh, the protective coat, the green protective coating on the circuit board on either end of that bad spot and then soldered in uh, a very small piece of wire. And I had to do that in two spots. And amazingly, it worked. It fixed this keyboard. And so now I have a working uh, Roland D20. Uh, vintage uh, synthesizer keyboard that I paid less than $200 for and uh, I'm going to use it uh, some for some upcoming analog uh, sessions and uh, I will post I will show you the video of uh, the one of the fixes that I did and uh, maybe I will come across some more of these where I can continue to do uh, videos on how to troubleshoot and fix these things so anyway i appreciate if you've gotten this far in this video i really appreciate you hanging out i know this is kind of me rambling uh, but uh it's uh it's cool because you know these machines they don't make them like this anymore you know you, you've heard that term before well they just don't make them like they used to well it's it's extremely true in the case of these synthesizers that they just don't make them like this anymore i mean the cases are metal the, the internal parts, you know, the stru internal structure of it is metal. I mean, it's it's an amazing piece of machinery. I, I I just have a real soft spot for these for these machines. So, anyway, I appreciate you sticking around and uh, tune in the next time, and we'll see you then. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So uh, you can see what I did. Well, let me zoom in. And see if there you go. You can see what I did here is I soldered a little jumper onto that broken trace. Um, let's see if I can find my exacto. What I did was I took an exacto, and uh, there was a, this will turn dark where there's see because there's copper under here. These are copper lines, copper traces, and they're covered with this green epoxy or plastic 
And so when they short out or they burn up or corrode, it'll turn dark under there. Uh, it's really kind of hard to explain, but you, you'll know when you see it, it'll just be dark. It'll, it won't be shiny like this. And so there was a dark spot right here. And so I scraped away uh, into, the, into that dark spot. And then you could tell there's no copper there or it was just corroded away. And then I scraped away until I found good copper on either side of that void. And then I soldered this piece of wire on, on each end. And uh, it's a little crude, but, you know, you can, you know, as I get going with and hopefully improve my skills, I'll be able to, because you can, you can buy like trace repair pens that you can draw, like, I don't know if it's copper or some kind of metal uh, onto it, or you can find these wires that are flat uh, that you can use to repair traces with also. I just happen to have this one, so that's what I used.